Hello guys and welcome back to the HJW Gaming Channel and a continuation of my Commander Counter Guides. If you haven't seen the first episode of this, please check it out, link will be at the end, uh, and it covers how to counter the Witch King. This video however will be covering another of the Evil Side's most popular Tier 3 Commanders and one that I know a lot of players have trouble with. In this video we're going to be taking a look at how to counter the Evil Men Commander Sunind. I really hope you enjoy. So, first up, I'm going to take a look at this very strong Sunin build you can see on screen and run through the skills explaining exactly what makes her such a powerful commander. So, first up, we have 15 points here in Dagolad Tactics. What Dagolad Tactics do does is reduces the damage received by your evil men by 15% for each allied orc unit present. So, in this case, There'll only be one orc unit per st as a standard build, so you'll get 15% reduced damage for your evil men units. But on top of that, with 15 points allocated, you also get bonus 10 defense to both your orcs and your evil men. So this skill massively improves the survivability of, the, of Sunin's army. This is followed by 15 points into her bottom respect zero skill tree, Haradric Tactics. What this does is make sure Orc units deal a bonus 30% damage for each allied evil men unit type present. So as I said, there'll only be one Orc unit, but there will be two evil men units in this army. So you're going to get a bonus 60% damage. On top of that, your evil men will also get two bonus attack and Orcs plus one attack. So essentially your Orcs are going to be doing an enormous amount of bonus damage as a result of Haradric tactics. The first sub-skill of this is Inspiration. This is basically just a flat damage increase across the first three rounds for all of your units of 23%, but it's also modified by the focus stat, so if you can get high focus, you'll deal an enormous amount of bonus damage in those early rounds. The next is the... I'm going to go straight on to the Respect 5 headline skill, which is Sunlands Tactician. So this is a slightly odd skill, but in the build that we're looking at here, which uses uh, two evil men units and one orc unit, the effect that's going to be applied is that there's a 25% chance for your units to deal an additional 90% physical damage after allied units attack. Now this is very important when you consider the units that I'm going to run through a little bit later on. In addition, you get 20 bonus focus, which does help in particular uh, with inspiration that we detailed earlier, as it helps increase that first three round bonus damage. The next sub skill is Reserves. This allows your units to recover 60% HP for the first five instances of damage taken. Now why five instances might not sound like a lot, what this actually allows uh, Sunin's units to do is stay alive particularly well during the first few uh, rounds of the fight, which are generally considered the most important rounds, as if you can keep these units alive, whilst you're culling down the opponent's army with skills like Inspiration and the bonus damage from Haradric Tactics, you'll basically have a massive advantage from those first early units of battle. The last sub-skill on the Respect 5 skill tree is Quicksand, which means that two of your units being targeted by the opponent will receive 20% additional damage and also have a 10% chance to be stunned in each round. Therefore, it normally means that two of your units will be stunned for one round in each fight, unless you get really unlucky with the RNG. The last sub-skill, if the Sunin has enough respect, is Faint, which means that for each five instances of damage dealt, all units get a next bonus damage of 25%, which again, when we consider the units, is a huge buff. Now even on their own, this amount of damage increase, as well as damage mitigation, sounds amazing, but then when you combine this with the potential units that Sunin can use, it makes her almost borderline broken. The Morgul Arbalest, in particular, has a massive amount of damage potential. Not only do they have pretty high damage as a ranged unit, they also gain a very strong skill, which called Jewel Bird Blows, which allows them to have a 90% chance to gain follow-up in each round. This means that they will take two attacks every single round, and when you consider back to skills like Faint, which every five instances of damage dealt, uh, all your units will deal an additional 25%, with two attacks from your 
Arbalest, and also attacks from your two other units. The, so, for example, here there's a Dragoon and a Halberdier. You'll be getting this triggered almost every single round, which is an enormous amount of bonus damage. On top of that, the Orcs will get a 60% buff from Heradric Tactics, an additional 23% in the first three rounds from Inspiration. And then, even if that's not enough, you have a 25% chance of dealing an additional 90% physical damage after allied units attack due to Sunland's Tactician. Essentially this means that there is an enormous amount of damage that can be gained from the Arbalest, particularly due to the follow-up and the number of instances of damage it causes, when combined with the Orc buffs that she can give. Equipment wise therefore, it's no surprise to see that Sunins are almost always geared towards buffing that Arbalest damage as much as possible. You'll see weapon wise is designed to increase attack, so you'll often see a gigantic hammer. And then everything else will be geared towards range damage. For example, here we have the Ranger's Shroud, the Hunter's Guide, and the Wizard's Fireworks, all of which combine for an additional plus nine, with the weapon given a plus six attack. So that's plus 15 attack just from the equipment alone, without factoring in might, focus, and also other buffs on the, on the items themselves. So therefore, it becomes clear that the primary damage coming from Sunind is going to be from the Morgul Arbalest. So our, t our target for countering her is going to be purely focused on getting as many of these Arbalests killed as early as possible in the fight, before they can really start to reap the advantage of those follow-ups and damage boosts. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is actually an equipment item that's pretty common, although not with the buff we're going to look for. The equipment in question is the Hithlane, which is very commonly used with the Mend passive skill, which allows your units to heal. But what we're going to look for is actually the Bane of Orcs Hithlane. As the Morgul Arbalest is an Orc unit, we're going to want to refine this as much as possible to increase that passive buff up to 18% bonus damage towards Orc units, so we can get those Arbalests killed as quickly as possible. Unit-wise, there's one unit in particular for good side that seems almost custom-made to counter Sunind, and that is the Dunedain. Now Dunedain on their own, stat-wise, aren't particularly strong, They've got very mediocre stats around the board, other than speed, they are extremely fast. However, it's their passive skills which are very, very strong against Sunind. The first of these, Bullseye, makes the Dunedain specifically target the enemy ranged units. This means that when you go up against a Sunind, your Dunedains will avoid those highly buffed and highly survivable evil men units, both of them, and target specifically the Arbalests when you come up against her. In addition to this, you gain up to 30% bonus damage against ranged units, meaning that you can deal an enormous amount of damage and get those Arbalests killed off as quickly as possible. The second passive skill the Dunedain have is Gracefulness. This can reduce your damage taken from enemy ranged units by up to 30%, so again it massively cuts the amount of damage that can be dealt by Sunind and her primary damage dealer, the Morgul Arbalest. So you definitely want, if you're specifically targeting Sunind, to make sure you have these in your army. Though of course be aware that they are specifically to counter Sunind and will not be very strong when you come up against other evil units such as the Witch King as they have almost no effect on units that aren't specifically ranged units. Skill build wise, there's two particular skills that you want to look out for that can help you counter against a Sunind. The first of these comes under the standard White Council skill tree, and that is Champion of Light. So Champion of Light is excellent because it can allow all of your allied units to deal bonus damage up to 28% against Orcs, Urukai, and Trolls. Of course, it's only the Orcs that we're interested in here. But this skill can be awesome for once again increasing that damage against the Morgul Arbalests. The second skill you're going to want to look for is Convener. Now, Convener can allow all of your units to gain initiative so that you're attacking first, and on top of that, you have a 75% chance of attacking twice via follow up, and this applies for the first two rounds. Now, both of this is important as the initiative means you can hit hard and follow up hit twice before the Arbalests can do their work. If you combine this with something like Dunedines, if they can get two solid hits in before the Arbalests can do any work, you gain a massive advantage by culling off a lot of their primary damage dealers. As a bonus, you also want to try and look for early round stuns. 
The reason for this is you want to try and reduce that early round buff damage from inspiration. So if you can stun the enemy Arbalest in the first few rounds, you'll see massive success. Therefore, two commanders I can definitely recommend. The first of which is Gandalf the Grey, as you can see here, as he possesses all of which I've just stated. Convener, Champion of Light, and he also has Wizard and Blindside, which can hit the early round stuns, particularly in the first two rounds, so you can cull off uh, those Morgul Arbalests nice and early, particularly if you're specking using Dunedines. I do have a couple of battle reports floating around for this as well. A second strong good side commander for facing off using these skills. Although he doesn't have the stun, a high respect Elrond will also deal an enormous amount of damage up against an enemy Sunind. As mentioned, he has Convener and he also has Champion of Light via the White Council skill tree. However, what you can also get from using Elrond is the massive amount of additional damage for your elven units given by Vilia's ring bearer. And as a sub-skill of this, you also have Starlight, which once again increases the damage on enemy orcs, Urukai, and trolls by up to 14%. So when you combine that with Champion of Light, you can deal massive damage to these orc units. So if we think about the possible combinations here, we've got initiative and follow-up in the first few rounds thanks to Convener. We've got a bonus 20% damage for your Elves units if you use two Elven ranged units from half Elven. A possible 20% buff from Boon. Again, an additional 28% from Orcs due to Champion of Light. Another 25% for your Elves from Villiers Ringbearer. And then 14% from Starlight. All in, that's a massive damage buff. The third strong commander up against Sunind. I'm not going to go through too thoroughly as... It's pretty much a counter to all evil side commanders, particularly if they don't run Pursuit, is Gilgalad. Now Gilgalad can be particularly strong if they don't have Pursuit, as Kingly Kin will allow his units to have a chance to evade damage in those first two rounds where Sunin deals a lot of her damage. On top of this, he also has huge buffs to his own elven units, and he carries the White Council skill tree with Champion of Light, so he can be specced perfectly to counter up against those Morgul Arbalests. However, as stated, this only really works if the Sunind is not running a Pursuit accessory, as with that, her units will just target your Elven units, which are trying to evade, and will just cull off your army, as he doesn't have any other buffs that do benefit in those first few rounds. And the final commander I can recommend to use against Sunind is probably the best of the bunch against them, and that is Isildur. Particularly if your Isildur is running a build focused around Dunedines, utilising the Respect 3 skill, he can be fantastic against Sunind. The reason for this is, his Respect 3 skill, King of all the Dunedine, grants a 3% chance per skill point, up to a maximum of 45%, for your Dunedine to gain follow-up, and that is applicable in every single round. So they have a potential to attack twice every single round at an average of between four or five rounds per fight. In addition to that, he also increases their bulkiness by giving them plus three HP. If that wasn't enough, through his Respect 5 skill tree, he also reduces the amount of damage they take through Last Alliance and Free Peoples, and has a chance to give the men units, so your Dunedain, a chance to deal highest damage. So you could have follow-up and highest possible damage, with up to a 75% chance per round. This is massive, as of course, if your Dunedain can hit twice, as well as having all of those massive buffs against ranged units, you will absolutely cull off the opposing Arbalests. In addition to this, he also gives Madness through Consequence of Greed, if you utilise his bottom Respect Zero skill tree. And if you hit Madness and get the lucky RNG on the Arbalest, the Arbalest will then inflict its massive amount of damage not on your troops, but instead on those two tanky evil men units. So you solve two problems in one. You avoid that massive damage from the Arbalest, and you get rid of a ton of those tanks. So if you can get lucky with this RNG on the Madness, you get an even better result. As you can see, there's a good, uh, good example of it here in this battle report. Lastly, as a kind of bonus, I'm going to talk through uh, two commanders whose Respect 10 items can make them pretty strong up against Sunins. The first of these is Faramir. So his Respect 10 item, the Ranger's Cape, gives him a very strong buff in the first two rounds. 
It gives all of his units initiative, which is very strong as we mentioned earlier, and also buffs the damage dealt of all of his ranged units by up to 60% depending on refinement. So during those first two rounds that I said earlier is probably most important for Sunind, you can act first and deal a huge amount of damage. All of AMS mounted units will specifically prioritize enemy ranged units when his speed reaches 350. So if you can get his speed up to 350, all of your cavalry commanders will attack those arbalests and get them out. So he's very strong against these arbalests and any commander in general that prioritizes ranged units. And with that, that's everything I've got to cover on this Sun Encounters video. If you have anything additional, please drop it down in the comments and let me know. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button and consider hitting subscribe to see more of my content in the future. If you want to see more videos by me, please click, click the link in the end screen which will take you straight to my Counters Witch King video. In which case, I really hope to see you on the next one.